Hey, Diana J. Brody here from NLE Academy, and today we have the ultimate Script AI Smackdown Premiere versus Avid. Who will win? Spoiler alert, it's Premiere. Used to be in the olden times that in Avid, you had to have the, the clip transcribed first by a for real transcriptionist. Then you would bring it in to Avid, you would import it into a script, and then, uh, and then you would marry that to the clip. But that's not how it goes anymore. Now, just like Premiere, there's an AI for that. So here's how Script Sync works in Avid. Now, to get Script Sync, you either have to add it on to your regular Media Composer uh, uh, license, or you, uh, you can upgrade to Avid Media Composer Ultimate, and Ultimate will give you Script Sync and Phrase Find. Phrase Find's also cool. We're not really gonna go over that. We're just talking about scripts today, all about the scripts. So Avid, Avid's AI is works like this. Follow the bouncing ball all the way over to my clip. Here's my cousin talking about uh, food, and I'm gonna make a script from that. It's only four minutes and 46 seconds, uh, the whole clip. So uh, it shouldn't take that long to make this AI. Here's what you do. You right click on that clip, and then you come down to uh, create script from clip, create script from clip, and then go ahead and do it. Now, as you can see, it is indexing and it's gonna look for the script and now it's going to sync that script. Now worth noting, you can also do this with sequences if you have the newest version of Avid, which I don't yet. But what you would do is you would go up to your sequence in the bin and you would right click on that sequence and then you would see a selection that said make transcript from sequence or something like that. And you would be able to make a transcript from sequences as well. Uh, I haven't upgraded my version of Avid right now because I'm in the middle of a project and I can't upgrade just yet. Uh, but just know that you can also do that from a sequence as well. So when you're done your sequence, you can create a script from that sequence, export that script. Uh, I, maybe you can't, maybe you're not creating an actual script script, but you are, uh, but you're able to at the very least export a transcript of your finished sequence uh, for your producer or director or for your own edification if you want to look at it later for your client whoever for whoever maybe your father wants to see it maybe that's a good father's day present consider that consider a transcript as a father day's father's day present not many people do and not many people should so we're almost done as you can see uh, it's just about two minutes to create this script from a four minute clip. So about half the content time, roughly. Uh, longer, you know, longer clips that are like an hour, two hours long, you know, those are gonna take longer to do. So you would just, you have to do them one at a time. You would set it up this way where you go click, click, click on each clip and one at a time and get it to go. Uh, so here's our script. I'm gonna pull this out because it docked itself up there so that we can all see it. And this is what the script looks like. Uh, first of all, you notice that right here, it puts this right over the script. I don't know why it does that. It's annoying. So you can literally pick it up and move it. If that thumbnail is too big for you, you can make that thumbnail smaller by doing Command K or on a PC, I'm gonna guess Control K and you can make it smaller. And so that it's not in your way. If, if you don't need to see this thumbnail necessarily, then you can make that smaller. Or you can do Command L if you're like, I really wanna see it. Now I've made it Command L and now I've made it much, much bigger. Uh, season to taste, up to you. Okay, I'm gonna move this over to this window for a second, just so you can see the source side window. And he says, uh, you don't know who else has been in the car. Okay, let's take that line. Let's say I wanna cut that line in. I can double click on that line and it will take a second for my drive to spin up. My drive is being very sleepy today and uh, that's always fun. And so it throws this sentence up here into your source side window when you click on it and it puts a little in right there. Then you can hit play, listen to the rest of it and be like, and be like, okay, that's what I want. Here's my in and my out. Go ahead, hit splice in or overwrite or V or B on your keyboard. As you know, I love the keyboard and put it into your sequence like that. And you can go through the transcript and edit that way. 
or you can also go through the AI transcript this way, right? If I know I want this whole sentence in, even if I just want part of the sentence, right? Even if I want, I then didn't have to worry about after the transplant. Let's say I just then didn't have to worry about after the transplant. Let's say that's all I wanted from this. I would still have to take this whole sentence, right? If I want to edit this whole sentence in, instead of double clicking on it, throwing it up there and editing it in, I can, if I know I want this whole sequence, come over to here, hold down, I believe, option command. Yes, hold down option command. And then if you notice my cursor, so here's my cursor. My cursor's hovering over this little node right here. You see all these little nodes? Those go with sentences. Those go with full sentences. You should get one node for each sentence. Sometimes it skips a node accidentally. You can add those back in. There are ways to add those nodes back in. Uh, but if I wanted to edit this entire sentence right into my sequence without having to double click on it first, I come over here and do option command and you notice it turns into that yellow arrow segment mode then i can double click it and it will throw it into a sequence now i didn't have a sequence already loaded up so i'm just going to go ahead and it will make a sequence and throw it into that bin for me so i'll click ok and now my computer drive will spin up. There we go. And so it, even though I did not even have a sequence, it created a sequence for me and it threw it in there. Now, if I had already had a sequence that was going, uh, and that was loaded down here, it would just go ahead and edit it straight into there without creating the sequence first, like you just saw. Uh, but that is super handy and that is very new and you need to hold down option command or on a PC, alt control and then you get that and you can edit that straight in now there's some other cool things that you can do with this one of the things you can do with this is you can say let's say i want this whole thing well first of all let's say i want right here this all this section over there if i hold down control uh control i'm sorry option command rather and i and i go ahead and i double click that now it's thrown that entire section in for me. So you can't do fractions of a sentence, right? I can't just take, you put it, uh, you put it in and into a box. I can't just take that out of that sentence. I would have to take that sentence and then edit the rest of it away, but you can add more than that. So I can, if I know I want all of this in, I hold down command option, double click, double click and they're through that whole section in for me. Pick an entire section, hold down option command and double click on the, on the line right there, just anywhere on this line and it will, boom, insert that stuff right in for you. Now it inserted it instead of overwrote it, uh, which is nice. So just know that if you know you wanna put it at the end, make sure your play has at the end and not in the middle. And then you can go ahead and grab whole swaths or whoops, or you can just go ahead and grab, uh, you know, if I want to grab just has it been an hour, then I can just come over here, option command, double click. And then it threw just that little, just that little sentence in right here. Boop, that little guy right there. There's a bunch of different things you can do with Avid. One of the things you can do with Avid Script Sync is I can say, let's say this entire take is great. Let's say my cousin read these lines like five or six times in a whole bunch of different takes, but I like this one the best. So I want to mark it so I can easily come back to it. Or if you're working in uh, scripted, right? And you've got circle takes on, on all the best takes of each scene and you want to mark all the circle takes, you can do that really easily by selecting the section that you want. Uh, and then you have to remember, you have to come over here and make sure this is clicked on. See this, this little square right there, that little square, just click on that square after you've selected. Uh, and then it knows that you want to do that. You can right click on here and choose any color you want. We'll choose yellow for right now, but because I'm clicked on that and I'm clicked here and then I hit that and then boom, it's colored it yellow. So now when I'm going through the script, I can be like, oh, that was the best take. That's the one I want. Or if you're like, uh, don't use any of this because 
that was wrong. And uh, what he said there was wrong and make sure you don't use that. Let's click over here and click on red, come back up. Uh, and by the way, we can, we can click here and move this down, right? We can move this down lower so that it's, it's right where we are. Uh, and then we can click right on it. We're clicked. I click on that square. I'm, I've selected the text and I can hit I, and then now it's red and I know, okay, that's the stuff I can't use. So don't use, he misspoke and none of this is correct and don't use that. Uh, and so you can do that for every take and you can add other takes on, right? So if I had a bunch of other takes, I could just take the take out and drop it right on the face of this and then have another take. So if he read this uh, two different times, three different times, however many times, however, however many takes you have, and you can do that for other angles, right? So I could have, uh, if I'm working in scripted and I have the close up, the long shot, uh, I have a wide master shot and I want to see all of those at once. I would just come, I would drop it right on the face of this thumbnail and then I could have them all straight across with all the different takes. And then I could click on, and it would say, once I added a take, this would, that little box would then have a one in it. The new take that I dropped on it would have a two right in this little box and so on. And I could click between the takes that way by clicking on the little box and choosing a different take. So there's lots of different things that you can do in Avid with Script Sync. You can also edit, right? So if there's a bunch of stuff that's wrong, I can come in here and I can say like, maybe he said, um, uh, you know, uh, he, you know, maybe this word isn't questions. Maybe that word is something else, suggestions. But for whatever reason, the AE hold, heard it as questions. Come in here, type suggestions over it, and then uh, click out of editing. I would recommend clicking out of editing as soon as you're done so that you don't do something accidentally. This is just a brief, quick overview of stuff that you can do in the Avid Script Sync. Uh, but um, it can do a whole lot more. By the way, one thing, notice here's the script icon right there. I normally would make a, a nice uh, folder right here. Let's make a folder, call that folder scripts, right? And then I would take my script and I would drag it into that folder and then I, all my scripts would be just all in one folder, right? And I can also tab all my scripts together across the top, just like you would tab a bin. So usually I do that, have all my scripts tabbed together like that. Uh, one thing that I really like that I wanna show you super quick is uh, in the finder, in the finder. So here's the find tool. You get the finder up, the search tool by doing command F, right? Which is I think normal in most uh, programs. Um, but here is the finder. So we've got the script, we've got the find tool out. Notice on the finder, clips and sequences, script text, script text. I can search just the script text. Won't search anything else, just the script text. I can search the, just this script by clicking here and saying current script. I can search all the scripts in the whole project. So if I know that three different people say, uh, talk about, um, uh, kidney transplant and and uh, delivery food and how dangerous delivery food can be for somebody who's had uh, an organ transplant um, for a variety of reasons. Uh, I could search scripts in the project for anybody and type in food and see if that comes up and it'll, it'll provide those search uh, results or in the script, I can do that. Click in here in the find and say food and just say current script and say find and then it will call up every instance if i once it calls up food right there i can do command f oops i can do i'm sorry i can do find and it'll every time i click find it'll click through all the times in this one script that he said the word food uh if you have phrase find then you can type in phrase find, hit phrase find, and it will find that phrase in your entire project. Anytime, even things that aren't in a script, right? Let's say I haven't made a script for something, but I know that two other people talk about delivery food, but I didn't even make scripts for them. I could hit phrase find without even having to generate a script and it will tell me all the clips it thinks 
uh, somebody mentioned delivery food and it will rank them from uh, where it thinks it's really, really close to something that could be the phrase delivery food, but it's not quite sure. Uh, so phrase finds also cool, but I really do like the finder. I use the finder all the time. Um, just make sure you click current script or search all the scripts in the project if you so choose. And, uh, and that is the cool thing that I really do like about Avid quite a bit. So you might be thinking to yourself, hey, that all looks great. That works great. I love how you can cover, color the different scenes. I love how you can add the scenes onto the different script and go through all the different, all the different takes. And that looks great. Why is she saying Premiere is, spoiler alert, the winner of this. And I am going to show you in just one second. Come with me to the Premiere side. Welcome to the Premiere side. Okay, here's how you do it in Premiere. First of all, I've got an empty bin right here. I'm gonna pull a clip into it, but I also have my text uh, window open. You can get to this text window by going to Windows pull down and going all the way down to text and choosing that. I have them right here side by side so you guys can see it. So everything's on all on one window, but normally of course I'd have these on my secondary monitor. Uh, but right now, so that you guys can see them, here they are back to back. And now I'm going to bring that same clip in that we used uh, over on the Avid side, Barack Food Interview. I'm going to bring that right in here, drop it into the bin, and say goodbye to that window. So here we have it. Once I have this and I double click it so it shows up in my source side, the text window will pop up and ask me if I want to transcribe it. Now, yes I do, and I'm going to click this button, but... First, I want to show you guys this. Come up here to the Premiere Pro pull down, go to settings, go down to transcription. And if you notice down here in transcription, you get the option to automatically transcribe clips as they come in. Boom, you can say automatically enable language detection as well. Uh, normally, uh, everything I'm doing is going to be in English because I don't speak enough Spanish really to fully edit stuff in Spanish, although I have edited commercials in Spanish before, but most of the stuff that I'm doing will be in English, but you can check this if you're doing stuff in other languages. Uh, but I almost always will have automatically transcribed clips, boom, selected. It's not selected for this project right now, but it's selected on most of my projects. <coughs> Excuse me. And, uh, and I like that so that as I bring a clip in, it will automatically transcribe it, including clips that are not just interviews, right? So if I have something where kids are playing on a playground and it's, you know, a long, fair long distance away and nobody's really talking, but you can hear one of the kids go, says really loud, uh, uh, everybody hide, hide and seek, hide and seek. And everybody goes hide and seek and they all flee to hide, right? Uh, and I want to use that as a sound up, I can, uh, that's all automatically going to be transcribed. So I'll be able to find that really easily in that clip. Let's say it's a long clip of like an hour long of kids playing on a playground because we're talking about playground safety. And, uh, uh, and so it's like an hour long clip of a playground. I don't have to look through that hour long clip just to find that sound up. It's going to transcribe that for me as long as it can hear it. And if I can hear it, usually it can hear it. And there you go. Bob's your uncle. So, uh, I usually have that checked. So every clip that I bring into my project automatically gets transcribed by Premiere's AI, which I really like. Um, so you can check that and say, okay, for right now, just because I want to just show you this one clip and I don't want it to be tangled up transcribing other clips. Here's the clip that we did in on the Avid side, took about two minutes. I'm going to hit transcribe here. I'm going to say yes in English. Uh, I'm going to say, uh, yes, let's separate speakers. And I'm going to say transcribe. So now it's going to do its little transcribey thing, just like it did in Avid but it goes a lot faster in Premiere, I've noticed. Although I find Avid's AI to be a little more precise than, uh, than Premiere's AI. So they get a lot more right, but look how fast that was. That wasn't even a full minute, much less two, two and a half minutes, right? That got transcribed super duper quick. Uh, so, uh, and just know also you can transcribe sequences as well. 
Uh, but if you tell it to transcribe all your clips as you bring them into your program, then as you add them into the timeline, it starts doing a running timeline of your script automatically, which you can then export uh, as, uh, as um, a transcript, send to your producer, or you can have it create captions. So you, if you notice on text, I've got captions and I've got graphics. All the graphics that I have in here are now right here as well in the text window, which I really like. I can also make captions. So I can say, create captions from transcript, boom. And so if I have this down here, uh, my sequence, I can go ahead and say, create captions from the sequences transcript. And it's already got the transcript because every time I've edited something in, it's creating now the transcript of the sequence, which is really, really nice and, and is much, much better than Avid where I can go and I can right click and say, you know, export as, uh, as a sequence, but it's not really keeping that running, uh, export the transcript from that, from that sequence, but it's not really, it's keeping it, you know, if I go there and I say, yes, go ahead and export, but in Premiere, you will notice that once I get on transcript, look at this, I, it, this is, this is the transcript of my sequence now, as opposed to when I click on this clip, now, once I click or I click on the source window, now this is the source. And now here's the transcript of my entire sequence. As I go, you can see it moving here and here, right? But if I click over here, now that's just this really super quick. You can, by the way, edit the text just like you can in Avid. So if he says, uh, if he says the word, like, here's the word obsessively, all I did, by the way, is I just double clicked on obsessively and it, and it automatically went into the edit mode. If I click out, it's out of edit mode, or you can click this pencil right here. So I can go ahead and if, if the word isn't obsessively, and let's say he said possessively, possessively, oh, that's can't possibly be spelled correctly, but then, you know, you can change it that way or, you know, change it back. Obs obsessively, I don't know. I'm, I'm not spelling anything right today, but you guys get the idea. So you can, uh, let's say they get, uh, the spelling of his name wrong. I can change the spelling of his name, uh, uh, throughout the whole clip, right? If I search for if I search for a word, I can search for the word and then I can change it globally. It'll ask me, do you want to change every instance of this word that you see? And I can say, sure. So if they've misspelled his word and his word's going to show up in the captions, I'm going to want to do that, right? So there's a lot that you can do. And just like Avid, I can click here or here or down here and it doesn't put an in there. I would have to then set my in and then go and set my out sometime later and then edit it in, right? So I can do it that way, or I can do it the way that I normally do it. This is how, this is my workflow in Premiere, and I wish Avid's was this precise. I can come up here to the middle of a paragraph, right? In Avid, if this is all one sentence, Avid's gonna make me take the whole sentence when I edit it in. But from Premiere, I can take a piece of a sentence. Let's say I just wanted the third ingredient or more. I just want that sentence right there and I wanna edit that in. So wherever my playhead is, it's gonna edit that in or if I have an in and an out set, right? But um, so here's my playhead here. Uh, and, and here we can put this down at the end of, at the end of this timeline, right? Let's put it down at the end of the timeline just for a better visual. Then let me click here, get this transcript back up. And let's say I just want to take, so someone without a suppressed immune system, that's all I want to say. That's what I want to edit in. For me, I have insert edit and overwrite edit map to my keyboard, which should come as a surprise to nobody. So right now it's on F9 or F10 on my keyboard because that's where it was in Final Cut 7. Pour one out for Final Cut 7. Uh, and so uh, if I hit F9 or F10, 
it's going to put this right into my sequence. I'm going to put V1 to V1, A1 to A1, click over here. It remembered, even though I clicked away from it for a second, that this is the thing I highlighted. And now I'm going to hit uh, splice in. Why not? Or I could have hit overwrite because there's nothing around it. But then you notice, here it is. It's right here in my timeline now. So I've got it in my timeline, that one sentence, just that sentence. Then let's say at the end of this sentence, I, and I'll put my playhead right at the end of that clip. Let's say at the end of that sentence, I want to have, if you don't have much of any system, you're going to get really sick right there. I want to take that sentence right there. Now I'm going to hit boom, overwrite. And now I've, I've, I've edited that sentence after into that sentence, right? One after the other just like that. This is how I edit now from from clips, right? If my if my producer sends me a script, I had a producer recently send me a script and said, "I'm sorry, I don't have any time code for this. I don't know what happened to the time code window, but I couldn't see it." And so they edited the whole thing. Uh, it no longer does it even matter whatsoever for me because I can just come up here to the search and if she said uh, slightly, let's say I look and the sentence says slightly upset. Well, there it is. Now I found it in this transcript. The one thing I don't think this does, this particular search, is search all the scripts in the transcript. I would have to go to an outside search and, and do an outside find, right, to do that, just like I did in Avid. Uh, and then it'll search everything everywhere. Uh, so in that way, Avid has it all over Premiere, but Premiere, I can find this now. So she said, you know, uh, uh, without a suppressed immune system, they might have a slightly upset stomach. And that's the sentence I want. And I want it right where this playhead is right here. I can hit insert and then watch. Boom. Now it inserted it right into, right into my timeline, right in, right where my playhead was. And pushed it right in there. Here's a good reason why people should map, splice in and overwrite to their, to their keyboard. Because look how much easier that is than if I, let's say we go down, certainly someone has a full system, gets a little sick, and I wanna bring that in. Now, if you look, because I highlighted that, it put in, in, in and out on my keyboard for that exact sentence. I could then drag it down but I'm not a barbarian. And the workflow is so much faster. If I come here and go boom, overwrite that in, then I come here, highlight that, overwrite that, then I come all the way up here and I click here and I overwrite that. And my cat loves it. My cat is so happy when I use the keyboard instead of just like they used to do in the 1800s where they would drag it out of a window. We're better than that, people. We can use the keyboard. Stop dragging your overwrites and your insert edits. Start using the keys for that. It's just much more efficient. It saves your arm and it's much more accurate. But I love how Premiere will keep a running total of your of your entire sequence here's my whole sequence and it's all here in the script because everything because i had every single thing uh transcribed as i brought it in right so i love that then if i'm trying to find something specific within a big timeline i mean this is 45 minute timeline almost uh, so if I'm looking for something that's like within the timeline, I can just come up here and say, you know, uh, uh, sitting because I know that, uh, talks about it's, uh, sitting. And then if I'm like, well, that's not exactly the, uh, let's say the word up. So there are 42 different research results for the word up and I can click through them, just like I did on Avid, hitting find, I can click these arrows up and down. Now, the one thing that you can't do is you can't color code little sections like you can in Avid. So in that way, uh, uh, Avid, 
Avid works a whole lot better, but in every other possible way, including you saw how fast it came up with the uh, AI transcript for that. The fact that I can click on one button and say, boom, create captions from transcript because it's making a transcript in its own little noggin as I go through and I edit everything in, it's making that transcript for me, it already, it can just make those captions. It's just better. It functions better. And the workflow of being able to come here and get just one little sentence the first day and highlight that sentence and then boom, uh, you know, and then edit that in, right? That just, I don't know, it just works better. But Avid is catching up. But for right now, I got to give the win for this SmackDown to Premiere. Congratulations, Premiere. You did it. You won the script SmackDown. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to hit like or subscribe. And if you got any questions, hit me up in the comments. Feel free to check my link in the bio or the link underneath if you're watching this on YouTube.